We're going to go ahead and have our project discussion. Um, like we talked about, by the way, I, I think that James introduced me in the first class. I guess I should have started with that, but I'm Hayden Fennell. I'm a postdoc in James's group. Um, I'm focused on helping with developing educational materials um, for the CompuCell project and for some of James's coursework. Um, an educational researcher. My background is in mechanical engineering and materials engineering. My PhD was in engineering education. Um, so that's why I'm kind of helping with the course. I'm sort of the unofficial TA, I suppose. Um, but for those who don't know me already, there's that out of the way. Um, so I think James said that we were going to start today's class with discussion of kind of where people are in the projects. So we're still going to do that. Um, and then at the end of class today, there's actually maybe two different things that we can do. We'll see kind of how people feel after project discussions, which things we would rather, which thing we would rather do. So we'll talk about that in the second half of class. Um, it'll be a slightly shorter class today. We'll probably be looking at getting out of here at around seven-ish, um, depending on how long project discussions take. Um, so I think with that, we can go ahead and get started. Um, so before we actually move into project discussion, who has something like prepared to show in terms of any kind of like slides or something? Um, you just want to use the raise hand or not raise hand, I guess thumbs up or whatever emoji you'd like. So it looks like everybody already has, <laughs> everybody used a different one, nice. Um, everybody already has some things ready, but for the first maybe 15 or 20 minutes, I thought it might be useful to have a little bit of reflection time before people present um, to kind of think about some specific questions before you talk about your project. Um, so just to go over these quickly. So we'll have you take about 10, 10 minutes with a few minutes for questions to talk about what you're planning on doing with your project. But um, like I said, take the next 15 minutes to maybe look at your materials. And if you don't have a whole lot of materials yet, this will give you a chance to kind of uh, build out some things to talk about. So I do want you to cover is a little bit of your understanding of the biological background of the problem that you're interested in. Um, the second point then would be the specific problem and context of interest. So what is your specific motivation for studying this? Um, and if you need to get more specific than the biological background, that's a chance to do that. So if there's like a larger biological setting and then there's one specific thing you're looking at, that's where you would tell us about that. Um, what are some hypotheses or a specific thing that you're trying to test with your model? Um, if you're not sure yet exactly what you're trying to test, then just maybe talk for a minute or two about what you're trying to learn from the model. Um, that kind of goes along with point two. And then for point four, maybe talk a little bit about your project plan. So three important points here. What do you know already about the pro or about your problem? Um, what do you feel like you still need to learn in order to address the problem? Um, and then a little bit about how you plan to model this system. So what are the steps you plan to take. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll put 15 minutes on the clock here. I still wish, I feel like a timer is something that Zoom has needed to implement for a long time. They don't have one, but I'm going to go ahead and start a 15 minute timer here. So if you just want to take some time um, to kind of think through this stuff, we will get started with presentations um, with a slight twist in 15 minutes. And if you have any questions, so this isn't necessarily silent thinking time. If you have questions along the way, feel free to pose them to me or to the group. Um, and just as a final note, if what you had prepared for they already answers these questions, you don't need to reorganize your presentation. It was just these are some things to, to think about um, if you haven't already. Um, because the twist, slight twist on your presentations today is that I had assigned summarizers to your presentation. Um, excuse me, sorry. 
we'll have to revise this list. It looks like because we're missing Jonathan and Santoshi doesn't come back, then we'll have to shorten it even further. Um, the idea here is you will get about ten minutes to kind of walk us through your presentation, or um, not necessarily your presentation, but your your project idea so far. Um, and each person will have another person assigned to be a special listener who will then take about two to three minutes to summarize what they think your project is <laughs> based on how you've described it. And then they're, they will ask one question of something, at least one question, uh, something that was maybe unclear or um, if they have a suggestion for how they you might go about modeling your problem um, to kind of kick off the, the Q&A. So does that make sense to people? Any questions about that? We'll work, work through in this order. So we'll have Emma go first. When Emma's finished with her presentation, Michael, you will kind of summarize what you think the, the core thrust of her project is. Um, so just kind of re-explain it in your own words very briefly. Um, any questions about that before we get started? I have a question. Yes, Pedro. Who is Michael? I'm sorry. <laughs> Michael is William. <laughs> Thank you, Pedro. <laughs> I don't. I was looking at an old, out of date roster. I think when I made this list. William, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> um. Yeah, Michael's my roommate. Obviously, he's going to come in and summarize a project. All right, so Emma, we'll have you get started. I'll let you take over the share. And looks like now that we're down to three people, I'll put 10 minutes on the clock just to kind of keep us from going way overboard, but you feel free to take, you know, 15 to 20 if you need to. Um, maybe let's say cap it at 15, but I'll put 10 minutes on and I'll let you know when you've got two and then we can just keep going after that. just so that we have some time left at the end of class to, okay. Yeah, yeah Pedro so... briefly mentioned that, that there was, that you guys were working together. So, okay, that complicates things a little bit. So we'll have two presentations then. It's probably the easiest yep. way to do it. So William, you'll summarize Pedro and Emma's project. Uh, okay. And, and then vice versa. <laughs> so. Gotcha. Um, so I'll give, let's see, this is like very free form now. <laughs> Had all these plans. Um, all right, I'll put 15 minutes on the clock for you two. Who wants to start? Am I able to pull up the slides or do I? Or I do it. Up the slides, I'm working on it. All right. Okay. So many buttons. So presumably Santoshi and Jonathan are also doing projects, but okay, can you all see? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um Pedro, how do you want to do this? <laughs> I, I will let you introduce the slides and uh, you can introduce each slide briefly and I can talk, uh, like add a few, a few things. Okay. Um, so our project is uh, going to be on the innate immune defenses against um, a viral infection in particular, where we were thinking about the flu, but the work can apply to other viruses as well. Okay, so um, the important, most important part of the biological background is um, the idea that you know, there are viruses that will infect our tissues, and then we have um, defenses against those viruses that can help uh, cells fortify themselves against infection and respond in other ways. So the problem to be dealt with by the immune system is that 
viruses can gain access to cells and then change them into little virus replication factories. So a virus will um, sometimes like inject its genetic material into a potential host cell or enter in another way. And then that genetic material will be copied um, with the same molecular machinery the host cell would usually use to replicate. And the viral proteins will be assembled inside the host cell. And then they will come together to make copies of the virus, which will fill up the host cell. And then the host cell will um, die. And all the viral copies will be released to go around to the neighboring cells and infect them. And in this way, an infection can spread through the tissue. I can't really see um, your faces at the same time as I have my presentation software up. So let me know if um, you would like me to move to the next slide or you have questions. Yeah, no, just go ahead. Okay. We can save questions for the end. Okay, so um, in response to the problem of attack by viruses, um, we have different types of immune system defenses. And um, one branch is the innate immune system. That branch will mount you know, a same type of response to any pathogen. And then the other branch is the adaptive um, branch. So that is the branch that will have some memory for a particular pathogen and mount a re response to an invader that's particular to a previous memory. Um, of that type of infection. But we're gonna focus in our project on innate defenses. So the main idea behind innate immune defense is this um, state that cells can enter in which it's not possible to synthesize RNA. So that is helpful because that's how the viral genes would be transcribed for um, protein synthesis for viral replication. If you can't make RNA in the cell, the virus actually cannot make copies of itself with that cell. So it's a protective state that effectively stops the spread of the virus. Um, but the issue is, okay, how do you get the cells notified that there is um, an attack going on and get them into that protective state? So um, when a cell detects a pathogen, like a flu virus, then it will start to secrete particular signaling molecules called cytokines. Um, a particular type of cytokine that would be involved in the processes we're interested here would be an interferon, but there are others that could be involved as well. So these will be secreted, and if they accumulate past a certain point with a high concentration, um, they will cause endothelial cells, the, the ones that you know we don't want to be infected to protect the body, to activate this defensive state. And those cells will then be resistant to um, invasion by the virus. So if enough of these cells in the tissue enter this defensive state and then cells start spreading their cytokines, synthesizing and secreting cytokines, then the entire tissue can be put um, on the defensive against the virus. But the issue is, okay, how do the cells call to each other to get the, vi uh, the, the tissue to mobilize? So that's what we're gonna be modeling. Is this, um, okay, I can proceed. I can add a few, a few things. Because okay. it's 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 uh, we I discussed with Emma, uh, and it's it's interesting to see uh, how she puts some some things that for uh, for me, uh, I mean because uh, the way I explain to her and maybe oh. um, when we research uh, about innate immunity in the web, we get this non-specific wording. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it 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 doesn't mean that different pathogens will be will lead to same responses mm -hmm. uh, the the example the, the the best example is that uh, for example some viruses will replicate in the nucleus mm -hmm. some viruses will re replicate in the in the cytoplasm some viruses will replicate in the golgi and there are different mechanisms of detection Mm -hmm. And they will lead to different ca uh, signaling cascades I see. and different response responses, but it's it's non-specific in the sense that um, find the same set of defenses, right? But the particular way you use those defenses will depend on the strategy of the pathogen. Is that right? Uh, like the protective state is the same state. Um, across types of infections, but how it's activated is different. 
Yeah, you, you, the, the cells will also secrete different cytokines depending on how it's activated. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think the best description for the innate immunity, instead of saying non specific, I think we should uh, say, um, uh, I mean, it's non adaptive. That's, that's what it is, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we we, we kind of use non-specific as an antonym, antonym, antonymous mm -hmm. for uh, adaptive, which I think, I think maybe maybe it's wrong, because uh, it's it's uh, let's say, um, for example, uh, it it doesn't learn. That that's mm -hmm. I think that's that's the that's the point. It doesn't learn about the the pathogen. It uses so it the can... same the mm -hmm. same tools, but it can use the tools in different ways. You know. Okay, so like, um, would it be true that a vaccine in the long run would not have an effect on innate immune response to the disease that's being targeted by the vaccine, but the adaptive immune system would um, respond to the vaccine in a way that would change the long-term immune behavior? Uh, both systems adaptive and innate, they they talk to each other mm -hmm. because you, uh, you have, for example, the T cells will influence the behavior of macrophages and neutrophils. So they definitely talk to each other. But when you are vaccinated, is not your, your is not your innate cells right. that are learning how to deal with the pathogen. Mm -hmm. It's your B and T cells in your uh, lymph nodes, and then the T cells later in uh, residing the tissues. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that learn, that have like the, the knowledge about dealing with that viruses, mm -hmm. that specific virus. If you remove those and you infect the tissue again, it's the same behavior as before. So, uh, in in a sense, you can you can think of the innate immunity as a non-evolving defense, mm -hmm. and the adaptive is an evolving defense. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we wanted to do to model, um, this situation is to have a population of simulated cells and then have them transition between certain, um, states that represent different situations relative to the infection. Um, so those states would be normal cells. So, um, this is a cell that's just doing its usual business and then, um, that cell could, within the rules of the model, transition into the defensive state, which is that um, viral resistance state we talked about before, or into the eclipsed state, which would represent um, the cell having been invaded by the virus, but it's, it's a placeholder before the next state, which would be infected, um, which is in turn a placeholder for the next state, which is um, apoptotic. Um, these would be actively releasing the virus to infect other tissues in, in the real situation. So in the model, um, transitions between the states will be um, determined using probabilities that will be computed on each step um, as a function of the states of the neighboring cells. Um, so that would mean that this is a model that um, satisfies the Markov assumption or memorylessness so um, the transition to um, states at the next time step will be determined entirely by the configuration of the states at the present time step. So that's a little bit of the background um, for the modeling. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're not particularly worried about compatibility with CompuCell for this project because it's really uh, made to fit the, the approach. So it's going to be an agent-based model where, of course, the agents are cells. And um, 
we could implement our states as cell types, which are supported in CompuCell. And um, neighbor interactions are important in CompuCell and they are as well in this model. Okay, I think I can add a few things here. Mm -hmm. So uh, the this concept, this idea of uh, transitioning states of the agents based on the on the neighbors, this is well studied in, for example, uh, ep uh, epidemic models, epidemic uh, simulations. Uh, but in CompuCell, we can. Uh, uh, study, for example, cell heterog heterogene heterogeneity heterogeneity. <laughs> I don't know how to, how to say it. Heterogeneity. Heterogeneity. I think. Is heterogeneity. Right. Okay. <laughs> Hetero heterogeneity. Is that it? Okay. And um, topology. So how cells are arranged. Uh. I think th this is what would, uh, what makes CompuCell useful. Otherwise, we just like build a grid with each each pixel have has a state, and that's all. We wouldn't need CompuCell. Did you say you wouldn't need CompuCell? Yeah, in this case, we wouldn't need CompuCell. We we could uh, just like build a grid in using Python or C, or something. You build a matrix hmm. and you assign a state like zero, one, two, three, four, each entry of the matrix, and you can uh, play with that. Hmm. But in Compass Cell, you have you can model cell heterogeneity. So for example, differences in cell volume, differences in like slightly differences in probabilities of state hmm. transition, slightly different prob uh, different probabilities in dying. Um. Uh, what else? If we are trying to model this system, uh, as a neighbor to uh, a fluid medium, we can then use diffusion, or for example, we can model all sorts of uh topologies. For example, three uh, D versus two D configurations so cc3d supports that and i think that that's what justifies using cc3d so it's possible to actually build a model of a tissue with multiple kinds of different cells with different um qualities different behaviors and then translate this infection model into that setting yeah yeah um so one thing that we just mentioned that doing this kind of project would help us think about is um, how the dimensionality or topological dimension of the simulated tissue um, affects the spread of the infection. Infection. So typically, um, a lot of research in labs is done with these cell monolayers that are grown for the purpose, um, but we could try to see if the infection spreads differently in a simulated cell monolayer than through, say, like a simulated tissue. And if that's the case, then it would be um, an indication that we should try to focus on 3D um, research in the lab instead of just the cell monolayer. So that, that would have implications for how research is done. Um, we can just study how the progression of the disease varies as we vary the model parameters and see what the, the space of the possibilities is there. We could also use this model to simulate different types of treatments and see whether they are effective against the infection in the, the simulated tissue. So one type of treatment we could simulate is the use of cytokines, like pretreatment with cytokines, for example, before infection. Um, another type we could model is potentially antivirals, but that could be um, down the line. Finally, we could also simulate um, the tissue's capacity to recover from cell death through uh, infection by including a type of cell state which can lead to cell growth and replication or division. Um, and we can see how that affects the progression of disease and, and how healing from the disease happens.
Sound good? Okay. okay, so I'm going to go back to being able to see you. Yeah. So, okay. Pedro, any final comments? So, the 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 motivate the motivation for this project, I think, I can address more or less. So, this is a simpler way to study the outcomes of infection in a virtual tissue in CC3D uh, as like a first approximation of how infection spread works. Um, I think having such a simple model is useful to compare with more complex models. Of course, for my research, I'm building a more complex one. And it's also possible to, so when all the architecture for this model is done, it's easy to grab more sophisticated methods that re that controls um, intracellular dynamics and couple both because the architecture will be uh, well studied already and the, and how neighbor neighbor cells work to spread or hinder the infection. If, if we have that understood, it's much easier to progress later on. And for uh, sometimes you build a, a complex model and the complex model achieves less than the simpler one. Uh, there are some classic cases of that in at least in physics. So it's it's it, it's good to have a simple one, a versatile and very broad model like this one. You can achieve many final configurations with very little effort. Um, of course, the parameters are less accurate, but it's 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 a it's a trade off, and I think it's good to have the best of both worlds with a simpler and a more complex model models to uh to 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 study uh, an experiment and for the hypothesis we have a few hypotheses for example we think that cell death helps containing the infection um we think that um pre expose uh, pre exposure of the cells to so cytokines or stress would help also hindering the infection. And we can test all of those in this simple model very, very cheaply. Cool. Okay. So thank you too. So now William. <laughs> I need to summarize, right? <laughs> yeah. So Three, there's three points. What is their project? <laughs> so okay, so they... their project is about like innate immune defense against like most of the flus or like common flus that happen in the world. And they wanted to do like the innate immune system like modeling for like, uh, I don't know, like, what part is it like stop the state or how to notify or all of the above? Yeah, or so I think we, we wasn't we, we, we were clear about that. So mm -hmm. um we just want to do like each cell has a state, for example, defensive, uh normal, infected, and eclipse. And mm -hmm. the cells can transition. They have probabilities of transitioning between states. So uh, yeah. a normal okay. cell can transition to a, a, an eclipse state or can die. Mm -hmm. And these probabilities depend on the state of the neighboring cells. Uh, so you are try to like stimulate the effect on neighboring. Like, do you want to see like what? environment they would change in different environments without yeah so uh the setup will be for example you you create a layer of cells 
in CCFD, mm -hmm. like the the like the tissues we usually do in class. And then you start with a few infected cells spread, spread around the tissue. And okay. then those infected cells will increase the probability of their neighboring cells to become infected. And then mm -hmm. they, uh, the, the infection will spread uh, from these infected uh, regions, these uh, early infected cells, they will spread to neighbors, they will spread to neighbors and sp spread to neighbors, etc. And of course, cells can die and can enter uh, into defensive states. Okay. So it's just it's just like neighboring interactions, and nothing more. So it's a very simple. But um, it, but it it seems to me it's like you're testing how the virus are spreading the speed mm -hmm. rather than immune. Oh, so, so uh, okay, yeah. Yes. So I'm just yes. Kind of kind of confused because like oh, it's what I. No, it's like you guys are doing innate immune system, but I don't know which part is it in that part. So yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So uh, the the innate immunity will be expressed as probabilities. Okay. The the those probabilities will be functions of the state of the cell and the state of the neighboring cells, and okay. we can also um we can also um define a cytokine field so for example uh, eclipse cells can for example release the cytokine fields this uh the this signaling molecules that can be sensed by the neighbor the neighbors so the innate immunity as well as the viral spread will be both um be represented by these probabilities and how these probabilities depend on the states of the cells. So it's implicit. It's not explicitly defined uh, using ODEs because that, that's that's far, far more complex than, than this model here. Okay. So what else do I need to say? <laughs> no, I think that was good. I mean, you asked your, okay. your question and got it clarified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the main the main point is just to have your your project summarized by a peer so that it's you can determine kind of what else might need to be answered in future presentations if that makes sense. Okay, so my turn, right? <laughs> yeah. So now we'll do the same thing in reverse, and you'll have two people putting you in the hot seat. Unfortunately. Okay. Can you see my screen right now? Or. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. Presentation project overview. So. My project is about like compare individual based approach to modeling self organization of multicellular tissues. So to be to be like easier to acknowledge if it's like cell based models are I want to do cell based model, but it's for like tissue growing for uh molecules like mm, how do I phrase it? That's it. <laughs> it's like, I want to do like cells growth, but it's like, cause it can be affected by a lot of environments and like growth division and communication by each other, like the cells, neighboring cells. So it's kind of like, there's a lot of factors on it. So I was like seeing this paper, this and discussing with Dr. Jane News and and we're talking about like how to make this model for me because I am a new newbie for like stimulation and stuff. So it's like, I got kind of the understanding of how to model and how to like follow the mathematic thing behind it so it can work. So this paper is like being published by what Oxford and some other universities. And they use the modeling chase Chaste, chaste, chaste. Yeah, so chaste, yeah. yeah. And for my part of it, it's like I want to do it in computer cells 3D. So, so I'll be digging into like the mathematical form behind the thing. It's a 
the called Motropolis Ascending Algorithm, which is like a math thing that I can do to model the sales growth and all the things. But for this part, because like in the paper, they have five different models. And for me, I wanted to stay with the easiest one for right now. So it's the cellular automation model, which is a CA model. And that model is like, it captures the basic dynamics of cell proliferation, depth and movements, but it doesn't like represent the complex cell shape or interactions, which is like, it's kind of like the basic of self growing and all that stuff. It doesn't go into like interactions yet. So for right now, I'm trying to make this work so I can move to the next step, which is like the CP model, which I will talk to later. But for this type, I wanted to do the model and a few different like testings, which one of them would be like stimulation of cell sorting due to a differential adhesion. And then comparison of cell sorting dynamics across different adhesion stimulations, which this one will compare with the CP if I had to like go through the CP stage. And the next one is like the effect of perturbation of perturbations of the on cell sortings and stimulation of monoclonal convention in the colonic crypt which is different things that I could explain like one by one. So for <clears throat> so for the first one, which we can jump back, this one. So for this one, it's like showing the select time for each model of cell type A and B, which is in purple and green. So, this one is like, you have to do the comparison of cell sorting dynamic, which shows like it is affected by level of random motion and applied to cell by temperature and magnitudes, which shows like the growth and like affecting by neighboring cells. And for the next one, which is comparison, it's just like you do comparison with different types of model and have a little bit of chart of seeing like which one is going higher and low. And for the third chart, it's for like effect of the <clears throat> stimulation of perturbation of cell sorting, which is kind of like a, mm, this is like, kind of hard for me to understand, but I'm trying to understand while I'm like looking towards, looking towards it, but it's kind of like the degree of self-sorting observation in random self-movement. So I'll look more into this one, but I still doesn't know like why it doesn't, why it spreads out like at the end. And it's just like color coded in for this one. And for the bonus one is like, I want to do the next step, which is the CP model, which kind of interested me more because like the CA model, it's, it's just like building the structure and the environment. So the CP model is like stimulate various biologic phenomena. It's like cell sorting and cancer development and things. It's more into different like signals and communication by this state but it's more like hard for me to do because I I don't even know if I can do the CM out right so CP will be like my aiming my goals but CA will be like my basic ones and that should be all yeah okay so let me I'm gonna jump in with one quick question. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll let Emma and Pedro um, do their summaries and questions. So is this um, three different potential project ideas you have, or would these be like... No, the... it's, it's one. It's just like I need to build the CA model so I can test the things out. Mm -hmm. And what, sorry, what do you mean by CA model again? I forgot. Uh, CA model is like the basic. 
the seller yeah. automata seller automata yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just like it's like this one it's like the basic dynamics okay yeah because like for the the charts that i gave out like in the slides it's like the testing and like the what's what it's like getting a conclusion from the the data we had mm -hmm. yeah so it's just different like adhesion mitosis something like that i'll just put in different like types into it gotcha yeah okay so <laughs> emma and pedro i'll turn it over to you too i guess you can't talk at the same time so one of you will have to <laughs> to volunteer to summarize first. Okay, I can go. Um, okay, so uh, my impression is that William's intention is to get some practice with the like nitty gritty of modeling. So actually working on understanding how the math um, supporting an existing model translates mm -hmm. into the behavior of the model. And the first model you're going to look at um, there is the cellular automaton or CA model, mm -hmm. which if I remember correctly, is like the grid that um, Pedro was talking about using instead of a CC3D if we had a different sort of problem for, for our project. So um, in that model, there's this grid where each um, unit in the grid can be like of a certain type and um, mm -hmm. the units of a certain type can change their type um, based on how their neighbors are. So you can uh, through the grid. Not, it's kind of, Mm -hmm. Like not dependent on the neighbors, it's like okay. itself mostly, yeah. Because for so, this part, it doesn't have interactions yet. Okay, so it okay. It's a model with no neighbor interactions, where yeah. the probability of switching to another state or or type in the grid so is determined by this. It's just like I think it's just growing and having different like stimulation in it for right now for the CA type. Mm -hmm. So it's. Um, it's yes, it's yeah, the, it's the, the the two ideas are super super similar because yeah. what, what is happening in the cellular automaton is that you have a an energy functional the H the Hamiltonian and you write the energy of an interaction and then the the probability this P swap probability. Mm -hmm. This is the probability of transitioning that we are that, that's that's the idea we have for ourselves. But we in 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 in, the, in our case, we want set in the we want to write the probability fun, uh, the probability as a function of the neighboring uh, types mm -hmm. and write an, an analytical form directly for the probability. In this case, you have an energy functional, and then the probability is uh e to the minus variation of the energy mm -hmm. uh, and you you i i i think it's fundamental it's like almost the same what is going on uh, uh fundamentally but I, yeah it's similar is... it's just like building up upgrading and stuff from yeah. ca to cp is T time or temperature? Which one? You mean temperature? In, in the equation for P swap. Oh, I think, yeah, temperature. Okay. Right, so that would mean the greater the temperature, the um, how, the more likelihood, likely it is that there will be a swap. Mm -hmm. Yes. That makes sense. Okay. Um, so you're going to implement the cellular automaton model and then apply it to um, cell sorting. So it's, yeah. it's similar to what we did in the homeworks with CC3D, but you're going to actually do it yourself instead of using CC3D with a similar. No, no, I'm using CC3D because I, it has, oh, okay. I need to bring that into CC3D for that. Okay. Yeah. I have two two questions then. So first one, I don't know if you can do that in CC3D. And second one, why do you need CC3D to do that? 
because like it already been done by the the thing we talked about is that chest chased something like that so dr james and i just like talked through it last weekend and we're thinking of if we can bring this one into computer cell 3d maybe oh wait, wait, wait. so so, cool so you're you're thinking about implementing seller automaton into cc3d yeah okay is, isn't this like a a a hard thing to do i mean uh going which inside the yeah C++, the C++ <laughs> side of it you have to do a lot of programming you told me that isn't that hard but it's cool that if you can do it and i was like okay i'll try <laughs> i think that that would not be that hard if you were already familiar with the source code and you were a skilled python and c++ developer but if you're not then that's going to be really hard I, like I, I, I think I'm good with Python, but I'm just learning C plus plus like this semester. So yeah. <laughs> like studying the source code would take a long time. Mm -hmm. I tried to look at it, and it, like it's big. It's it was made by many people over time. It's not as though it yeah. So I don't know. I don't think that's easy. Yikes. I yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit skeptical. <laughs> I don't know if I can kind of project them this semester, <laughs> but I'll try. I, I'm trying to think, because may, maybe it's possible just to modify. Like, like instead I was of thinking adding like, stuff. Like, it's just like the mapping and some codes that are just different format. If I can just change that, that would be pretty easy. But it's like what Emma say. I need to like look back and do the source code and stuff. This would be easy for you to implement on your own. Mm -hmm. Like the hardest part yeah. would be understanding the math well enough to implement it, and then maybe yeah. the graphics, which is annoying. Could you go back to your first slide for a minute? Okay. This one. Yeah, sorry, oh. I just wanted to... Or do you want a link? I can send the link up to... Yeah, that'd be good, actually, if you could send... I think I have this paper, but... Yeah. you have a link to it, though? Because I, I think you sent it to me, right? <laughs> uh, no, I think James did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just put it in the chat. Oh, wait, this is Osborne. Yeah, I have this one. Osborne 2017. But Pedro and Emma might not... They might want to take a look at some point with all of our unlimited free time. Okay, any other questions, Ember or Pedro? Huh. So th this this first simulation you can do, I think you can do in in, in Compressor without changing anything. What? Am I Wait a my... second. Uh, my earphone just run off battery so i didn't know <laughs> i i missed up target area and target perimeter for cell k no this is this is pots ah okay so i'm 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 really pots here all right because uh listen so uh if you take cell uh pots model which is compass cell 3d and you remove the volume interactions and you remove all the cells you have like for each type you have just one cell and they don't have volume mm -hmm. that's basically cellular automaton but you are limited to the contact energy plugin mm -hmm. so i think you can replicate that uh, simulation they have because this gamma is a constant that depends on a and b so this is the contact plugin the equation two in your slide and in the in the in the paper equation two is basically the contact plugin okay so if you if you like remove 
everything from CompuCell and just leave this, the contact plugin, which is perfectly possible, that seller automaton, basically. Okay. I think. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just... Because I'm still looking into the, the article, which I still try to understand some, like, math and how it works behind it. Yeah, so... Yeah, but if if you if your idea, which I think is not, but if your idea were to implement a seller automaton with all its capabilities, like setting setting rules for transitioning based on how the the up neighbor is, how the down neighbor is, etc. Uh, that that would require like uh, maybe. recoding or adding code to cc3d mm -hmm. but that simple simulation they do i don't think so i think it's way simpler than that okay so William, any more questions for Pedro or Emma? I uh I think I'm good. <laughs> okay. In that case, so since our numbers are dwindling, um I think yeah, so let's see. So we can combine this with our break, I think. My next step was going to be to have everybody think for a few minutes about now that we've had a chance to discuss. And again, I thought there was going to be slightly more, more of a group discussion going on. Um, um, but the next thing to do is to kind of identify what your next project step is. Like if you were going to spend an hour at the end of class, we're not going to, don't worry, but If you were going to spend an hour at the end of class working on your project, what would you do next? Um, so I think I had a 10 minute break planned here. And then what I think we'll do is I was, like I said, I was gonna offer the option of either doing a course material review activity or doing um, open lab time, basically, since there's only the two groups now. Um, I don't know that open lab time is the best choice because I was going to take votes, but I think that doing the course material review might be more useful um, for getting some feedback on kind of things that are still unclear that we may need to either go over again or develop some supplementary materials. So let's take our 10 minute break. Um, while we're taking the break, be thinking about what your next project step might be. And then we'll still have after the break, we'll have you identify uh, where you're going from there. And then we'll spend about 30 minutes on material review and then we can call it a day. All right, so in that case, we'll go ahead and get started on the next thing that I had. First though, I do want to jump back to next project step. step. Um, so if people would like to put in the chat, so Emma and Pedro, I'll keep you separate on this list for now. You can have the same project step if you're both working on the same thing. If you're um, splitting up the work, then it's so useful to have it separate. So if people want to take a couple minutes to put in the chat what they're planning on doing next on their project, you can add it to this slide. Okay, I know that's good. Um, so your point three, specifically keep learning about biology. What is the next thing you feel like you need to start reading on? Um, well, James mentioned this textbook. So I got this with interlibrary loan and it's big. So I got a physical biology of the cell, Phillips. Okay, Phillips. He really recommended this. So 
I don't know, I'll just like read stuff in here. It seems cool. Um, I have this one too that he also recommended. So just read these. Um, I guess also read about more immune system specific stuff. Hmm. So my background is um, just like very abstract computational neuroscience. So I don't know much about details. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a decent planning. Have you taken a look at any review papers? No, I should. By any chance. Sometimes that can be a, I mean, textbooks are always good when you need to learn from zero. Yeah. But sometimes review papers can give you pointers on um, where to start for other knowledge. Yeah, so I guess I can look up a, a review specifically on influenza because it has a particular approach to dealing with the innate immune system. Um, and then I can look up research on the human and innate immune system in general. Mm -hmm. Views. One says finding a difference, which is up so. All right, so William, if you were to have to pick, like, again, if you were to start working on this tonight, what's the next thing you would sit down and do? Sit down and do... I mean, I I still need to, like, read through specifically about the paper, about, mm -hmm. like, the math and... Because, like, he has a chart that that's kind of... is, like, the basic of what the model is like. So I think I need to know more about the chart and things. Um, the chart in the Osborne paper? Yeah. Because I, I still have a few things that I still doesn't really understand. And so I need to either ask you or Dr. James about that. This chart? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, we can, if you'd like, we can talk more about how to go about doing that because sitting down and trying to understand a chart like this when you're still new can be, you know, can spin off into <laughs> yeah. hours and hours and hours of work. So to go ahead and take a shot at it. If you um, had a chance, I would recommend just sitting down and reading through the paper mm -hmm. and just marking. It's like, oh, I don't know this. I need to read this. Just assemble a list of things and sometimes by the end of that that process you'll have a better idea of kind of where to go next okay yeah um yeah because this is one of those fields where you can spend more time like realizing what you don't know than actually learning what you <laughs> what you need what to you know. can do yeah <laughs> um yeah, so I think that that's a good starting point. Just read through the paper because if this is you know kind of what you're trying to replicate, just get to know the source material as well as possible, mm -hmm. and then and then start branching out from there. I would say. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, so I think I'll leave this slide blank for now. We can revisit this maybe at a later date when other people are are available. But I will save your responses here. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to do, and then I'll, like I said, we'll try to end by seven or earlier, and then I can give you back that time in case people do want to work on their projects for the remainder of the, the class period. I originally was going to have people vote. Like I said, I think that with since we've lost some of the um, group help potential of the original class size, I think it'd probably be best just to go with option A here. Um, spend some time talking about things that we may want to topics we may want to revisit, finding out what people need. Um, is that okay with people if we just go with A? Um, because otherwise it'll kind of just be people sitting quietly working with with only two projects in the room. For me, because I already know the course materials, for me, I will choose B, of course. But I, so I will leave for Emma and William to choose. Yeah. 
So we can still, yeah, go ahead. I'm behind on the homeworks because they take a long time to do. So uh, I think the best way for me to learn the course material is actually to work through those problems. Uh, So that would be the best use of my time, I think. We could talk about the homeworks maybe like they they're very dense they're they're good like for learning but they just take a long time yeah okay so then let's let's do that we'll wrap that into a and this was going to be fairly open-ended anyway um so what i'm actually going to do is stop recording so we wanted to record the project discussion but I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now because I think that sometimes these discussions are best had somewhat off the record. Um, appreciate your apple duck face, Pedro. I turn the cameras off and immediately Pedro gets goofy. Um, okay, so what I had planned here is for take the next, we'll say 10 to 15 review your notes from previous lectures. And like I said, if people want to focus this on homework, so we can do that. Um, but what I was going to have people do is walk through things that maybe you've made note of in the past, um, things that stuck out, topics that you personally feel unsure of or confused about. And again, here, specificity is the key. You want to be as specific as possible. So if you're confused about diffusion, what are two or three specific things within the diffusion discussion that are kind of maybe keeping you from understanding it as completely as you feel like you would like to um and then once you've made that list rank the topics in order of importance again no no specific metrics here just what you think is the most important um and then the second piece of that was topics that haven't yet been covered that you feel are important to your project so what again maybe that's the easiest way to help filter these things is in working towards completing your project what do you think you need a better understanding of moving forward. Um, I'm checking the chat here. And then I had a Google Sheet. Let me grab the link. where people can put in their their numbered list. I was going to say once you had numbered lists to put in the top three. I can get my chat window back. Here we go. All right, so here's a Google Sheet. And the idea is we can start building this out as the semester goes on. People can put in things that they're still unclear about and we can potentially invest some, some future lecture time on revisiting some of this or in targeting homework assignments or in building supplemental materials. And if you if you want to discuss about the homeworks, we can discuss, I guess. Because I kind of did the homeworks my way, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I can help <laughs> if you want. I so far have not found that I get like stuck on the homeworks. It's literally that I was, I had a routine doing them every day and then I focused on a different project for a week and a half and then I got behind. That's literally my problem. So I just need to be more disciplined, I think. Maybe I can cook up some questions if I look at the last one that I haven't done yet. Do you know whether there will be another homework this week? Um, I assume that no. I'm not sure about. I don't think so. Okay, uh, because just... it would have been on what James would have covered this week. So it'll probably be moved back to correspond with his lecture next week. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so let's take, I'm going to put 10 minutes on my timer here. We don't have to take the full 10 if people don't want to. Um, but let's go ahead and take a stab at putting some topics on this this list for the next 10 minutes, and then we can have discussion about homeworks for a few minutes. All right, so I'm going to 
switch to this document. So do people have a couple of of points specific topics? The one vote for the Schrodinger equation. <laughs> Not normally covered. But it is related to diffusion, according to Pedro. Um, what do you mean by quantities exactly? Like cell properties? There is a list of some of them in the documentation. I don't know that it's all. Let's take a quick look. I think this is it, right, Pedro? Mm -hmm. I think this is our list of... We have a list of cell properties somewhere, like things that are built in. Yeah, go to the manuals in CompuCell page, CompuCell website. That's where I am. No, no, you are, you are in... You are in the reference manual. So we'll go to compucell 3d.org. Yeah, so quick reference guide. Oh yeah, this is it. So here's the reference guide. You now Pete moved some stuff around recently, so I need to go in and Freshman memory on where things are. All right, this is quantities. Yeah, that's good. So these can also be technical questions. They don't just have to be conceptual course material stuff. William, anything? Okay. Well, this is a start. So we'll send this link out by email so people can start um, adding topics as they see fit. I'll lose a little bit of formatting to this so that it's a little easier to navigate if people start filling it in. Um, as far as homework goes, so let's see, that was, yeah. Pretty much what I had as far as structured activities for today.
Um, you guys did say you wanted to talk a little bit about homework. What do you want to talk about about homework? And more time to do the homework seems to be in high demand. So I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, but William, what um, you said in chat that you are also, was it, were you saying same to the idea of just needing more time to do the homework? Or were you having specific questions? Yeah, more time. Questions? Okay. Because I, some questions that uh, is like, you need more time to do like research and know more about it before you can solve it. So it's like taking a lot of time for me. Mm -hmm. Um, would your vote be more time to do each homework or shorter homeworks on the same time scale? I think a shorter homework, but yeah, a shorter homework would be good. One question typically takes the time the homework is going to take. Um, if it's a question that involves figuring out how to do things in CC3D that haven't been explicitly covered in class. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I didn't catch that. Um, so one of the multi-part questions from the homework typically will take the time that is written in the homework for the entire problem set. Um, yeah. If it's the case that that problem involves figuring out how to do new things in CompuSell 3D. I agree. But I will say that I have learned a lot of practical skills from doing the homeworks. Okay. Plus they're fun. Well, that's good to hear. But that's definitely so yeah, that kind of stuff is good for us to know if the homeworks are taking a really long time. Um also that can also be an indicator that you might want to shoot us an email if one question is, you know, taking <laughs> looking like it's going to take six to eight hours. Um, we'll look into, um, maybe shortening some of the future homeworks or combining some of the questions if they're taking people this long, um, especially now with project demands gearing up. Um, you know, I don't want to speak for, for Dr. Glazier, but we'll talk about that moving forward about trying to make the homeworks, um, more manageable without sacrificing you know, like Emma, what you said, like what you're learning from them. Um, but yeah, just for future assignments, if it is taking a really long time, don't hesitate to email either me or Dr. Glazier and or both of us is probably the best and just say, hey, this is taking a really long time. Is there something I'm missing? Um, and we can help you with that. There's it not an official... Hmm? I was just going to say, there's not a, one of the issues is there's not an official TA for the course. So sometimes it's hard to figure out who to reach out about that kind of stuff but um you know just send us emails when you're unsure of things and we can try to help point you in the right direction it could be the execution time of the simulations on my particularly my, my particular computer because if i need to do mm, six to ten simulations for a problem to explore some space of parameters then i'm gonna have to wait for the simulations to run and that hmm. can end up taking me hours um <laughs> Do you have a multi-threaded processor? I would assume so at this point. I think so, but I can check. It's it's just my Mac. Okay. Because yeah, there I are. Think, I think this 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 is a problem. Uh, specifically of uh, with ammo, I think, because often often I do the the uh, I think, I mean, for the questions that I really did. I mean that I one hundred percent did. Uh, the simulations would run very fast. I would oh. get the result pretty pretty soon. Okay. I would not require scanning parameters like crazy. Okay. But there's a caveat. I am super familiar with Compicel, and I'm super familiar with all interactions of all the parameters, and I already know what to expect. I already know what to, uh, how to achieve things. So that's so that's that's a caveat but well i know there's also be, some, be taking them all there's some slight differences between windows and mac too about how to enable the multi-threading stuff um i'm not a mac user so i'm not entirely sure about that but we can 
Um, if you just want to say, I, I, I don't use I don't use multiple threads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the 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 computer I, I I use in class is a like a basic computer to not say mm -hmm. another word, another word. Um, and it, it's it's fine. It, or, or either it's a, a huge problem with Mac, or there's something weird going on. Yeah. Okay. Well, then Emma, maybe we should set up some office hours. within the next week or two to take a look at um, some of your homework problem setups to see if it's a technical thing or if it's a hardware thing. Okay. No, that didn't make any sense. Hardware is technical. If it's a code-based problem or if it's a hardware problem is what Okay. I mean. Um, Cause yeah, at this stage, these simulations really shouldn't be taking that long. Um, it could also be an output frequency kind of thing. Sometimes that can, that can simulate a slow simulation. <laughs> if you have certain types of output settings, like if there's pauses in there for some reason. Um, but that's, you know, that's hard for us to diagnose unless we can take a deeper look at, at what you're working on. And also some some a uh, uh, tip for you some simulations, uh, so uh, the 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 simulation time scales with the lattice size, mm -hmm. so uh, some simulations you don't need a large lattice. Okay, that could You be need it. like two five five by two five five to simulate uh, fifty cells. You get I think it. that's bigger than I would typically use. Yeah, I, 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 if I want like 50 cells, I will do at maximum 100 by 100. Okay. And diffusive simulations, I will like use like 40 by 40, 20 by 20, like very, very small. Okay, so some of the problems actually call for a 200 by 200 lattice, so that could be my problem. It might be that you see that and you just make it half the size because you know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah, Some sometimes I ignore the instructions and I do my own. Okay. Yeah, you can do that, I guess. Yeah, so what I would recommend, um, Pedro and Emma, since you're already working together on your project anyway, <laughs> is probably at some point next time you're in the same room together is pull up the code you wrote for your homework and compare Okay. and see, Yep. you know, where these discrepancies are. And... But by by this point, I think I already deleted everything. But I can I can look look, look at uh, what Emma did. It's enough, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if you can't figure out what's what's happening, then let me and James know, and we can um, help you figure that out. Sounds good. Because James and Machik, the CompuCell developer, is much more familiar with the strangenesses of running on Mac, because neither James nor I use Mac, so. Uh, that's an area where, unfortunately, we have other people in the group that use Mac, but they're not, you know, involved with <laughs> with this part of our our stuff. So, I think um, I asked my friend who took this class three, four years ago about it. I think she's a Mac user. She said that the homeworks took her a long time. Um, she often submitted them incomplete, so it might be a Mac issue. Mm -hmm. But I think, I mean, she, as far as I know, is very good at programming and at learning things in general. So, yeah, that really could be a computer being the limiting factor. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, if Pedro can't help you figure out how to get it running faster, then let us know and we'll look into some alternative solutions. Yeah. Next time next time we meet, I, uh, I try to use Compucell in your machine and see how I feel. <laughs> yeah. Get a sense of how it is. To really judge. <laughs> All right. So any other questions about homework stuff for now? Or do people just want to take this last hour to, to spend on that? Or on getting some dinner? That's a tempting option, Hayden. Um, cause I don't have anything else planned for tonight. It was, again, I was expecting the presentations and stuff to take much longer. And then we lost three other people from our, 
our group. So, well, we lost two people and then it turned out two people were working together. So they only ended up with two presentations. So, so what is, uh, it's not recording, right? What, what is going on with Santo? 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 Santoshi? Oh, I don't know. Is... He often um, tunes in and then tunes out. Yeah. Yeah, it's like for, for the first five minutes. And uh -huh. when she or he detects that we'll <laughs> call, like for something to be done, it's a <laughs> go away. That's a I typical Zoom um, adaptation, I think. Yeah, I don't have enough information to speculate about that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, hopefully next time we do presentations, we'll have two other projects to talk about. I don't know if, um, I know Alex, I think he's auditing. I'm not sure if he's planning on doing a, a full-fledged project. I mean, he already is doing a CompuSell project. Maybe he'll just, maybe we can get him to present on that a little bit. Have uh, past sections been more densely populated? Um, in the past, yeah, but we usually, it's usually around 10 ish, okay. upwards of 10. Huh. Typically a smaller class. I mean, this is exceptional though. Exceptionally small. Yeah. <laughs> For any, I don't think I've been in a class this small before. Yeah. They've been targeting more specific populations lately, I think. Uh, and, uh, we, we're getting uh, less interest from people in campus. Because I, I, I don't I don't think it's um, I, I think I think difficulty is not a problem because I do other classes very, very difficult, not yeah. very, very difficult, but difficult challenging uh and people don't bail you know yeah people go and they they keep going and and they're tough <laughs> yeah i mean if you take a class in the math department the entire semester you're just going to be sweating and suffering but no people don't bail on those classes yeah i mean but but math people are, are crazy by default i mean uh, in 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 the in biology class, the biology class is super heavy on stuff to do, to read and discuss, mm -hmm. and the, oh. the exams like detailed like questions asking about everything, each uh -oh. pathway, and people go and they 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 like they get low scores, low grades, and they keep going. And I have I'm doing image processing, and it's like the uh, pr pr the, the the professor. Uh, talks about very weird advanced ma mathematics. People don't understand shit. You look <laughs> at their faces; they they are like wandering. They keep going and they do the homeworks. They try. They they are there. So that difficulty is it's. I mean, uh, J James James said, "Oh, maybe maybe Aleph is trying to um, is trying to get rid of." the 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 classroom i mean reduce the, the amount of students but he's failing <laughs> people are going huh. well it, maybe it's because they know oh image processing has all of these immediate applications to tech jobs and they just motivate themselves that way yeah as a slightly more senior representative of the glazier group i try to keep my speculation more limited um in public settings but yeah i think i i do think that there is an element of people that aren't super interested in specifically learning copy cell bailing early on um, on the class because maybe it feels too focused on like one specific tool as opposed to oh. a broader skill set um but again it's hard to know because we we don't hear from the people who quit why they quit. And so it's tricky to 
to really figure out to figure out why. Because Ellis' class is like huge this semester, from what I've been hearing. Um, Yeah, it's, it's like three classes worth. Because it's a, it's a giant room with three boards, like uh, three uh, projectors, f full, full of students. And it, it's, it's not an easy class because you, you have to treat the, the images from scratch. You cannot use uh, available packages. So you have to take to have to take the image, transform into an array, scan uh, like scan pixel by pixel of the array, and do transformations and uh, everything coded from scratch. Is there a specific focus of this image processing class, or is it just general image processing techniques? It it, it was supposed to be focused on medical applications. That's what the name is, like image processing focused on uh, applied to. Uh, for medical or something, but uh, so far it's not. It's like general image processing techniques and using like basic programming. It's not like, ah, using CV2, using SciPy. No, it's code from scratch. I wonder too if um, some of this is being impacted by the AI boom right now. People probably view the image sensing thing as a much more marketable AI forward skill. But we are um, not using AI. But... We're not using you know, AI. I know, but I'm saying that it's, I wonder if there's bleed over oh. of that being such a, um, what's the mm. term, trendy topic right now. I wonder if people see a pipeline into that through that kind of class as opposed to this. Again, it's hard to tell because we don't have, I can't walk around with a, a clipboard and ask people. I mean, I guess I could. I'd have to get IRB approval, but. You don't have to get IRB approval for surveys. No, not if it's going to be, or not if it's not going to be published. I would want to publish it, though, if I'm going to spend all that <laughs> as an educational researcher. No, I have some. But anyway, yeah. Can you okay, well, I think. Um, People don't have any other questions or anything they want to specifically talk about today. We can go ahead and call it here, and I'll give you back forty-five minutes of your evening to put towards whatever you see fit. Um, if that sounds good to people. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. And Emma, send us an email if um, you and Pedro can't figure out why your simulations are are running slowly. Because um, again, he may be able to take a quick look and see, like, oh, you didn't change this flag. That may be all it is. But if it's not, let us know, and we'll we'll try to figure. William, are you having any issues with speed on your end with simulations running? It's like for my end, it's like I have problems. Like when I like when the Python has like errors, I have to restart the whole terminal in order to like test it out. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, because I I couldn't like because like it would just jump out error, and my computer just like. Oh. for like a bit and I have to re restart the whole terminal in order to like test it out so that's why I need to take a lot of time in the homeworks mm -hmm. like every time it freezes I need to wait and restart all, all the things again and sometimes yeah. the code doesn't even save <laughs> not to recode everything <laughs> yeah. we, we have a fully Python specification of Compucel and we need that deployed on the web it's, it's, yeah, we've got. It's to, we're, so, we're trying so to figure out um how to do that. We used to have fairly stable implementations of CompuCell on NanoHub, and then for some reason, a couple of updates broke it, and we had like we basically had to give up on trying to get the NanoHub people to help us fix it because they insist on installing everything themselves. Like you can't just install something to NanoHub; they have to do it. And so we were like trying to lead the guy through it and. And by, by the way, uh, that's that's a, a suggestion I I I would like to make to Emma. So our project is fairly simple. We can try and instead of using uh, the classic CC3D as we are using in class, 
we can try to build our project in the in the CC3D Python packages. So okay. you code in a VS code or a spider or like those kinds of code editors mm -hmm. and using uh, the, the what, what is it called? It's like CC3D Python API where okay. you call oh, yeah. functions. You have like a function like uh, run simulation uh -huh. and then you can plot the lattice using matplotlib. You don't need oh, like- Oh, that layer. would be, yeah. I would have a much faster time with that. Yeah. Yeah, just all of that functionality exists. It's just not very well documented because the guy who was okay. who had implemented that left for a tenure track position in Florida kind of right after he finished before we got around to doing good documentation for it. So it's on the to-do list. It's just not there yet. But Pedro may be more familiar with with how to work. I, have, I, have, I still haven't tried. I, I read the documentation. The documentation is good. Then I tried to implement in my computer and I failed. But I will try again with with a new computer, which I think is more promising. Uh, and uh, it's it's so the 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 code looks uh, like simple. It's it's a, it, it becomes a short code, and you can like call the simulation multiple times. Mm -hmm. You can call different simulations in the same code, which is amazing. And you can do like four loops over simulation and simulate many times and scan parameters, optimize mm -hmm. simulations, uh, all kinds of uh, like weird stuff. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah like if I knew, okay, I want to know um, what happens like in this range for parameters. Let me have this many steps and just do it algorithmically, set it to take a screenshot at the end. I could just put my computer in simulation mode and then walk away cook dinner come back and have it be done for me that would be very good yeah that's the idea and this is this this is currently possible uh okay. so we just we just need to if, if if you want to take the opportunity to to do the project fully on sure on python yeah okay let's go let's do it okay it's okay. a good idea Okay. Well, we've officially started doing the stereotypical Midwestern thing of saying goodbye and then launching into another <laughs> topic. Maybe that's a Southern thing. Maybe not Midwestern. Um, so one thing I do think would be useful, I'm going to do it again. One thing I do think would be useful is having a place where people can report technical problems, some kind of shared space. Um, I'll try to get that set up this week and let people know where that is where you can just when you're having a problem instead of having to feel like you're bugging one of us you can go put it in there and we'll try to check it weekly and if somebody else is having the same problem and has solved it they can help you in the meantime 